The swinging lower eyelid approach is an inferior conjunctival approach to the orbit combined with lateral canthotomy and cantholysis. This allows the lower eyelid to be retracted away from the orbital rim, particularly laterally, as if it is being swung on a medial pivoting point. The swinging eyelid approach provides excellent access to the inferior and lateral orbit and orbital walls. The patient is likely to be under general anaesthetic, but local anaesthetic may also be infiltrated to the lateral canthus and lower lid to improve hemostasis. The use of a corneal shield should also be considered. A small lateral canthotomy incision is made. The slope of this incision can be adjusted slightly according to the required access. If lateral wall decompression is being conducted, the incision may be horizontal or slope very slightly upwards to provide access to the superior aspects of the wall. If the incision is predominantly for floor access, for example for orbital floor fracture repair, it may slope slightly inferiorly. The inferior limb of the lateral canthal tendon is transected and the eyelid can be easily and markedly distracted away from the globe. A 4 silk traction suture is placed through the grey line of the lower eyelid. Straight, sharp scissors are spread just inferior to the tendon to create a small prolapse of orbital fat. The scissors are then passed into this pocket and medially along the plane immediately posterior to the retractors. The scissors should slide along this plane without impediment. The conjunctiva and lower lid retractors are incised a few millimetres inferior to the tarsal plate with a hot wire or cut with scissors. This incision can extend as far medially as required. The inferior orbital rim is brought into view by retracting the lower lid anteriorly and inferiorly with a Damar retractor and using a malleable retractor to retract and protect the globe. The tissues that are now stretched over the orbital rim and the periosteum are incised, here being done with a Colorado monopolar on the cutting setting. Care should be taken medially as the inferior oblique origin is a few millimetres behind the medial end of the inferior orbital rim. Less is probably more with closure. The periosteum can be closed if required, although it is frequently not necessary. The tarsal conjunctiva is repaired with 7 or 8 ovicral. The retractors are not separately repaired. Overzealous or crude retractor repair probably increases the likelihood of entropion. The lateral canthus is reformed and the lateral canthal tendon can be repaired, although this suture may also not be necessary if the tissues are neatly approximated during closure and the canthal angle nicely reformed. Orbicularis and skin are closed. Persistent chemosis is a possible but uncommon complication of this approach. This probably results from damage to the lymphatic vessels that are located alongside the arteries and branches of the facial nerve in the suborbicularis or sub superficial musculoaponeurotic layer of the cheek. The risk of persistent edema may be reduced by minimizing dissection in this layer and instead conducting any necessary dissection under the periosteum in the lateral canthal area.